So we have the game mechanism somewhat going on, but we do not spawn any fruits for the player to catch, nor do we spawn the obstacles to kill the player. So before we even do that, I'm gonna create a folder which I'm gonna call prefabs. So prefabs. And now I'm gonna go here in my sprites and the fruits and I'm gonna drag every single one of them. So every single one of these fruits, I'm simply gonna drag them here in the scene. Now I am gonna select all of these fruits and for the fruits, we are gonna add a circle collider 2D and we are gonna add a rigid body to them. So rigid body and we are gonna click it to be kinematic because well, we want it to be kinematic. Also the fruits, they're gonna be at 0.9, 0 0.9 0 .9 for the scale, for the X and for the Y. So 0 0.9 and 0 0.9 scale for the X and for the Y for every single fruit. And the bomb, the bomb is also gonna have a box, or excuse me, a circle collider. Why am I saying circle? Because, excuse me, now I'm confused. You, you guys confuse me, do not do that ever. I'm using, for the most part, box collider. That's why I'm saying box collider, box collider. So now we're also going to add the rigid body and we are going to check this is kinematic. Or excuse me, no. no, this is wrong. Not checking is kinematic. Also for this one, excuse me for this. So I'll, I get confused. I also get confused. So even Superman gets confused. So don't worry about it. It happens. Because we don't need them to be kinematic. They need to be a trigger but they are not going to be kinematic. So their circle collider is going to be a trigger for the fruits and for the bombs, but the rigid body is not going to be kinematic because they need to be affected by gravity so that they will fall down. And here for the scale of the bomb, we are going to set it at 0 0.7, 0 0.7, because we want to make the bomb a little smaller. And now we are also going to tag all of these. So I'm going to go here and create a tag. One is going to be called a bomb. So bomb. And another one is going to be called a fruit. So fruit. And you can imagine that I'm going to tag the fruits with the fruit and the bomb. I'm going to tag with the bomb. Not the fruit, the bomb, man. So Unity is not listening to me. And I'm also going to go in the sorting layers and add these sorting layers. So we are going to have the BG layer. We are going to have the fruit layer. We are going to have the player. And lastly, we are going to have the canvas. The canvas is going to represent our score. So selecting the fruits, I'm going to put them on fruit layer. The bomb is also going to be on the fruit layer. The BG is going to be on the BG layer. And now we don't see the player because the player is set currently on the default one. And now the player is going to be on the player layer and we are good to go. And we are going to drag the bomb in the prefabs folder, drag the fruit, the other fruit, the third fruit, the fourth fruit, and the fifth fruit. And even if we had 2,000 fruits, I would go and we're going to drag 1,099 and 999th fruit. And lastly, we are going to drag the 2,000th fruit. So yeah, deal with it. I'm gonna delete them now from the scene because we do not need them. So we can simply delete them because we have prefabs out of them. Now that we have created prefabs out of them, we can simply delete them from the scene and we can reuse them again. If I drag and drop the bomb again here, it is gonna be exactly as we just set it up. So now how can we spawn these? Well, for that, I'm gonna take an empty game object and uh, I am gonna position this game object above our scene. So. For the Y axis, I'm going to put it at five and I'm going to take a box collider and attach it on it. So what is the point of this box collider? Well, the point is first, I'm going to take Y, I'm going to set it at 0.25 and X is going to be on 4.4. Notice the width of this box collider. So it is almost as wide as our scene is. And we're going to spawn obstacles up to here. So the the last X or the minimum X where the obstacle or the fruit or the bomb is going to be is here. So it's going to drop from here. And also the last on the Y or on the right side is going to be from here. So they're not going to be spawned outside of the scene because we're going to use the width of this collider to spawn our obstacles from this place that you see here. So this is the area this right here, the collider is the area from which we are going to spawn our, well, fruits and our bomb. 
and I'm gonna rename this game object to obstacle or fruit spawner fruit spawner so now we are gonna go assets scripts and I am gonna create a new c-sharp script which I'm gonna call fruit spawner and I'm gonna attach it here and double click it so that mono develop opens it and there is not much or we don't need to code so much you're gonna see that mechanism is very simple and very easy to use and understand so first things first we need a serialize field of private game object array which are gonna be our fruits and here is where we are gonna add the fruit so if I go back in the unity editor select the fruit spawner notice here we have these fruits we are gonna have how many of these six because we have six am I true am I true am I right yes I am so let me just drag the bomb on the first one fruit one here I'm just gonna click on the circle and select fruit two selecting here the circle fruit three here four and uh, five in the same way as I said a moment ago if we had 3000 I would be like and here I'm gonna select fruit 2850 first and you would need to watch that okay now I'm just kidding man going back in the mono develop in the mono de going back in mono develop I you guys need to teach me grammar so here serialized field private game object array fruits and we have that in the awake function what we are gonna do is we are gonna get the reference to a collider so here I'm gonna say private box collider 2d which is called col short for collider and col short for collider is equal to get component box collider 2d because we need it in order to achieve what we want to achieve and here we are gonna have the start function and we are not gonna have the update function so here we are gonna create a coroutine that is going to spawn our game well obstacles or the fruits and the bomb so I'm gonna say here I enumerator not enumerable enumerator spawn fruits so spawn fruit and it's gonna take float time float time as a parameter so what we are gonna do here here we are first gonna say yield return new wait for seconds not wait until wait for seconds and we are gonna wait for the specific time and then we are gonna spawn fruit now since the U new unity's update I did not talk about this we have also wait for real seconds or seconds real time what that means notice here this creates a yield instruction to wait for a given number of seconds using unscaled time what that means that means even if we use time dot time scale is equal to zero to stop the game this right here will execute because it's independent from the time scale here I'm gonna pass time and I talked about this even in my courses and also I think I talked about here in some of the tutorials where we created our own custom how is this called I forgot I enumerated a coroutine yeah sometimes I forget what I want to say we created our own custom class for a coroutine that was independent from scaled time well now unity has that built in so it's wait for real seconds time but it's also nice to create that manually so that you know how things function so now here we have this yield return new wait for seconds time and now I'm gonna say float x1 is equal to transform that position that x minus the collider that bounce that size bounds that size dot x divided by 2f and float x2 is equal to transform that position that x plus the collider that bounds that size that x divided by 2f what is going on here well we are taking our own transform position x and subtracting from it the bounds of our size so the size divided by 2 which is this one right here so we are subtracting from our position this right here which will give us this number right here and then we are adding after that here we are adding that number for the x2 which will well do the same thing so it will add this half of the collider which is his bounce 
which will give us this number right here where I'm pointing with my mouse. So practically we're gonna get this number here and this number right here. So now what we can do is we can go here and we can say vector3 temporary position. So temp is equal to transform that position. And now we can say temp.x is equal to, and we can say here random, random, not random, it's random dot range between x1 and x2. And now we can simply instantiate that game object. So in stan, why is instantiate not work? In instantiate, yeah, misspell it. So instantiate fruits, and we're gonna instantiate the one from random dot range from zero up to fruits dot length. And uh, for the position, we are gonna use temp. And for the quaternion, I'm simply gonna, not QE, quaternion, quaternion dot identity. And the last thing that we need to do is we need to go here and we need to say start coroutine. And here we are gonna call spawn fruit passing the random range, not ray, random range between one and two. And we can also go here for x1 and or float one. What am I saying? x1 and x2. So here I can say float x1, x2. And uh, I can do something like this. So I can go here in the awake function and I can, well, simply recreate it. So that we don't need to recalculate this every single time. There is no need. We can simply, well, do it like this. So here, I'm also gonna take this one and put it in the start function. But now I am not gonna put random range. I am simply gonna put one. So we're gonna spawn fruits in one second. What is going on all of this right here that we did? Well, first things first, we have declared a private serialized game object array fruits, which is where we are gonna store our fruits and then we are gonna instantiate them from that array. And we already did that. We took our fruits and we put all of them right here, which we just saw. And now we are getting a reference or here we are declaring our collider, the box collider that we have attached on this game object. In the awake function, we are getting that collider by using get component. Float x and float x2, so x1 and x2, are gonna give us this number right here where I'm pointing with my mouse, and this number right here where I'm pointing with my mouse. And they're gonna do that by using the transforms position x and subtracting from it the half of the bounds. Actually, this right here is the half of the width. So half of the width of this one, we are gonna subtract to get x1, meaning minimum x. And we are also gonna add to our position the half of the width of our collider, which will get us the max x. So this right here is max x, this right here is minimum x. In our spawn fruit coroutine, we are waiting two seconds or waiting for the specified time here to spawn. After that, we are getting our own transform position and we are randomizing the x position by using the minimum and the maximum x that we already calculated in this awake function. And after that, we're simply calling instantiate, which will instantiate this game object with this position and quaternion, this is for the rotation and we are using identity, which will set the rotation at zero, zero, zero. And here we are also randomizing which fruit or bomb we are going to spawn when we spawn, well, a new fruit. And we are using random range from zero up to fruits dot length, which will return a number from zero up to this number here, not including this number. So it will return a number up to the length of our fruits minus one. And then we are simply going to start the coroutine here in the coroutine itself. So this will be an infinite coroutine. It will start over and over again. So here we are calling the coroutine to start. When it executes all of this here, it will call that same coroutine or it will call itself to start again. And we can now test it out. If I run the game, notice here in the scene, it is going to spawn obstacles. Notice here, it's just falling fruits. And notice from where, look how they are falling into these bounds. Into these bounds, they are falling. So they are not going to go outside of the bounds of the collider. And notice, 
not going out of the bounds of the collider and are just spawning and spawning in the interval of one up to two seconds. Now we have here a couple of more things that we need to do. First things first, notice how many game objects are we creating here, which are, well, infinitely here in our game. They're not gonna be destroyed. They're not gonna do anything. And notice now we are creating more and more and more. And this is eventually gonna hit our app. It's gonna hit the performance. We are gonna, our app is gonna perform poorly. It's gonna lag and whatnot. So we need to take care of that. And we also need to, well, add score and catch these. So when we collide with them, we need to increase the score and whatnot. Well, all of that we are gonna do in the next video. So guys, I will see you in the next one. Sorry for the many confusions I had in this one. I was like overthinking things, but hey, we are all human. Do not judge me. Do not judge me, I forbid you. Anyways, if you liked the video, hit the subscribe button, like, share, and comment, and see you guys in the next one. Take care.